Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I thought maybe I could give you guys some advice on owning clubs. Um, for the past like mm, eight years, I've owned different clubs, different types of clubs. I've been riding instructors, I've been club leaders, I've been co-owners, I've been just a part of the high ranks. I've been a part of clubs as well. And so I'm able to give multiple perspectives about clubs and owning them and being a part of them and just giving like ideas to you guys so your club is just not boring i guess but yeah so i'll be training in the background so if you want to just hop online train with me while you listen or just sit back do whatever and listen take notes maybe feel free to so the first thing that i would start with is the overall like welcomeness of the club so for example i know that some or most clubs do this now but whenever someone joins your club you should have all of your club members that are currently online to welcome this person into the club so that they feel like they're welcome and that people know that they're there and that they exist in the club. Another thing that I want to talk about is, for example, this. Whenever someone opens the club information, the first thing that they don't want to see is just, bam, a bunch of just club information like the club outfit or the club tack or club horses or anything like that. But here in the club that I'm currently in, moon progress my club owner started our information off with this quote that we follow as a club and that whenever i first joined was like oh cool okay i used to do this in my clubs like i would start off my club information with a quote that i like that i believe that we should follow or an inspirational quote that i believe that everyone should hear and so that's another way that you can have like a welcome into your club for new people and something that you can add into your welcome message you as the club owner could be something like, hi, whatever their nickname is, thank you for joining the club, let me know if you need anything, or if you have co-owners or other club leaders that know the club really well, you could also say that they can ask you for more information or they can ask your co-owners or club leaders. Now, moving on to organization, this is something that I literally cannot stress enough that is the most important factor of a club. Nobody wants to join a club that doesn't have anything in their information or has barely anything, maybe like five bullet points or something. Nobody wants to be a part of that club. A club that somebody wants to be a part of is a club that seems to know what they're doing. They have it all together. Now, they might not have it all together, but they seem like they do. For example, you could set up your club information with your welcome message, and then you can have the most popular thing that comes next is your club outfit and your club horse and club tack. And then after that, it's usually whatever. Sometimes I put, maybe if I have staff members in the club, like riding instructors, club leaders, I rarely have co-owners. Um, I usually put their nicknames, like I have like a staff nickname section at the bottom. That can be fluctuated to different things, maybe like, your social medias if you're able to get that through the chat filter and then your club rules do not forget to put club rules maybe they're common sense but you need to put them like for example in my club that i'm in we put this as our rules now yeah it might seem like your basic run-of-the-mill rules but it keeps our club in check and keeps us from having drama or spamming whatever and it's important to put rules like this so that your club members know that you have an expectation of them that they need to reach for you. Now, like I said before, the organization is key with the rules as well. Now, don't have just like bullet points everywhere, maybe a dash here and there. No, it needs to be clean and it should be neat and it should be organized so it's easy to read and your club members can take you seriously and think that you know what you're doing. Now the next thing that I want to talk about is the events that you have for your club and with your club. With your calendar, this also needs to be neat. Everything needs to be organized like I said before. But with your events, you should have something during the weekdays and then maybe one event during the weekend. Now I would recommend that you do the one event during the weekend on a Saturday. Maybe towards the end of the day or during the middle of the day. I would not recommend putting your events on the Sunday because some people are religious, they have church in the morning, and you don't really want to interfere with that and whatever plans that they have after church. Now, for the events during the weekdays, let's say 
your dressage club. If you're a beginner to elite club, I would say have definitely have practice like four days a week for each of those levels of dressage. And then maybe you can have one day where it's all of the levels. Now, this is five days a week if you do the four days for the four levels and then um, one day for all of them combined. That's gonna be five days and you need to make sure that you have different instructors rotating each day and then maybe you can instruct some days so just so that you don't get overwhelmed. If you're like an advanced elite club, you should still have four days a week practice and then I wouldn't necessarily say have a combined practice because it's really just two levels. So there's not much to work with there, you know what I mean? But definitely have at least four days of practice for both of those levels, two days of practice for each. You can do advanced elite a break on the Wednesday and then advance and then elite. And then Saturday be your event and then Sunday be another day off. Another thing that I do with the clubs that I've owned, Mondays can be a day off because whenever I did own my clubs, it was usually during the school year. And so I know that Mondays is kind of a stressful day because it's back to school. You might have a lot of homework that day, maybe a test here and there. And so usually I don't put practice on that day, but, um, and then on Tuesdays it would be beginner Wednesday intermediate, Thursday advanced, and then Friday would be elite. And then Saturday we would have like an event day. Whenever I owned Shady Hooves, our Saturday was known to be Hoofy Hangout Day. So we would do like different events like cross country, death curls, some other events like that, championships maybe you can do. And then Sunday they would have off because I know that that entire week along with school and their real life and whatever else they do, maybe they have a job, they can be really stressful. And then also with events, um, timing, like the times that you schedule your events for, that's also really important. The most popular time is 6 p.m. Central. And so I'll put on the screen what other times that would be in the in other time zones. I'm Central, so that's usually what I, what I use as, as an example. But um, it's usually like 5 to 7 p.m. Central. So like 5 p.m., 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Central. And practice lengths can range around like 45 minutes to an hour. I would not advise going under 45 minutes. And then I would not advise going over two hours. Now, if you do have a two hour practice, good luck. Um, definitely have a break in between because that's like visually staring at a screen for two hours. That's not good for your eyes. So you need a break of maybe like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, maybe like have those practices be once a week. So it's not like every single day you have two hour long practice. But the next thing that I wanna go into is, this is one of the key things to owning a club. All of these things are, they're all super duper important. But this, you need to practice what you preach. In your rules, you can say no spamming, no drama, and you need to do the same. You cannot spam anywhere in global and say chat, wherever you can't. And Drama, you can't make drama, you can't bring up past drama, you can't do any of that. And going back to your events, and if you say that an event is at a time, you need to show up at that time, and your club members will see that you're actually being serious about the time. And um, another piece of advice I would say about practices and events, have your club members or tell them that they need to be at the event um, at least five minutes before, for dressage practice, I would say definitely be five minutes before because whenever it hits six o'clock or whatever, you would want to be like at the entrance ready to start. And so during that, like, let's say 10 minutes before practice, everyone will be showing up. You'll get their like stats and everything and their levels and get all of that situated and get the line situated before you start practice so that you don't go like five minutes in or 10 minutes into the actual practice time, just trying to set up for practice. You know what I mean? My last point here, um, I know that all of this sounds like you need to be like strict, you need to be serious when it comes to owning a club, but it's really not all of that. You just, you need to be able to have fun and be flexible with your club members. You need to like have the ability to understand if they have other things going on in their life that maybe are more important than the club. Like I would I would let them log off and let them focus. And so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, let me know down in the comments below if I should have added on to anything or if you think I should have like expanded more on anything. And 
also let me know if you want to see a part two of this but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day bye